Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show where we give you all the Android news that matters to you, or at least to me. I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. In this episode, Google Voice is dead. Long live Google Voice. Storing your music in the cloud, and finally, Android outdoing, well, everyone. But first, we pay the bills, lest the lights go out. I'm doing it! Just give me five minutes! Thank you. Android Weekly is brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is all about making registering and using your domain name simple. Because really, even if you understand DNS, CNAME, MX Records, SPA, and IMAP, who really wants to deal with this stuff? If ever you get stuck, help from a real, living, breathing person is only a phone call away. Get 10% off your .com, .net, .me, or .tv by going to hover.com slash Android. If you updated to the latest Android 2.3.3 Gingerbread release, you may have lost your voice. The Google Voice service has only been available to US users, officially at least. However, the Voice app has always been available in the Android market, no matter where you call home. With the 2.3.3 update, international users found they could no longer get the app. Interesting-ish, right? It gets better, seriously, stick with me. The fact that Google Voice is not currently available suggests that when it comes back online, it'll finally support international users, and it gets better. Add to this Google's recent announcement that it's shutting down the VoIP solution it purchased last year, Gizmo 5, and it looks like Google Voice International Edition, now with 100% more real VoIP flavor, is coming, and that right soon. Google Voice has traditionally been tied to a phone line. You have to have a phone number for it to work. Hopefully no longer. Gizmo 5 goes gentle into that good night on April 3rd. Hopefully Google VoIP will rise from the ashes the same day. Thanks in large part to Google, we're already storing our documents in the cloud. Ditto spreadsheets, presentations, and pictures. It looks like music may be next. In the Google Data and Synchronization Settings screen, we've always had the option to sync contacts, Gmail, Picasa web albums, and calendars. And now it looks like we'll be able to add music to that list. No word on when or really even if this is coming. However, a user in the XDA Developers Forum found the sync music option seemingly by accident. No need to go looking on your phone unless you're rooted and running the older version of Google 3.0 Music Player. If this comes to fruition, we could be securely storing music in the cloud and streaming it whenever, wherever. It seems like this would make iTunes tying your music to specific physical devices that much less appealing. Sign on, tune in, drop out, don't mind if I do. Recently, we reported that Android had reached smartphone parity with iPhone and BlackBerry, and it seems Android's inexorable march number one continues. Comscore just released its January 2011 numbers. They show Android up at over 31% of the overall smartphone market in the US. This data compares the three-month period ending January 2011 versus the three-month period ending October 2010. Android climbed 7.7% to 31.2% of total US smartphone users. RIM fell 5.4%, and according to this data, Apple holds near 25%. I feel like a radio DJ here, that or a stock market commentator. Rounding out our top five, Microsoft drops 1.7 to 8%, while Palm dropped 0.7 to 3.2%. Long story short, Android is number one as of January, and they show no signs of slowing down. Interesting, sure. More interesting, perhaps, is the smartphone versus non-smartphone discussion. Android's making some pretty serious inroads compared with Symbian, the leading non-smartphone OS, this according to IDC. We may not think about so-called emerging markets too much, but they really are what drive feature phones, or dumb phones if you prefer. Now, Android, thanks in large part to the fact that it's free for manufacturers to use, is showing huge growth here too. As it stands, one in every five mobile shipped is a smartphone. Feature phones account for the other four. By 2015, IDC is saying that three in five will be smartphones. That equates to 359 million smartphones around the world in about four years' time. Now it's time for our review of the day, taking a look at the dual-core Motorola Atrix and the lap dock and the HD dock accessories. We throw it over to, well, me. We had a chance to get hands-on with the Motorola Atrix at a press preview. The core concept is an interesting one. The dual-core processor and one gig of RAM in the Atrix smartphone basically becomes the CPU for a whole mobile computing experience. Sold. Dock the smartphone with a lap dock or HD dock accessory and you unlock a larger view. You can run apps installed on your phone in full screen, or you can use a standard Firefox web browser, not a mobile version. You can watch the videos, view the pictures, and listen to the music that's on your phone. On the $60 HD dock, you can also output via HDMI to watch full 1080p videos, and plug in a keyboard and mouse to get access to the full Firefox web browser. With the $500 lap dock, you get stereo speakers, a 10.1-inch screen, and a near full-size QWERTY keyboard, too. As we discovered, it's not quite the solution we were hoping it would be. It's not going to replace your laptop. The biggest issue at play here is the fact that you're stuck in the confines of a browser. Now that could work as we're dealing with the cloud here. Google Docs for productivity, Picnic for editing photos, and so on. However, I'd like to see an option for a different browser, Chrome and its web store for web apps specifically. You can't install any software beyond smartphone apps. If the Atrix gets rooted and the developer community rallies around the laptop and HD doc concept, it could be awesome. As it stands right now, it's a cool concept, but at first blush, it just doesn't do enough to justify the $500 thin client that is the lap dock. 60 bucks for the HD dock? Maybe. That's all the news that's fit to Google for this week. For full show notes, links, and our undying gratitude, head to butterscotch.com. I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.